Let's talk today about winning every battle because the Lord is mighty in that moment. I'm going to give this mic to her when she's here. Thank you. And let's look at um, let's look at First Samuel today. Let's look at this scripture. And let's start from verse 46. Let's read together. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord, mercy. You guys hear that scripture? Remember, David was just a shepherd. I looked at this whole chapter. You know what was interesting? When he was trying to talk with Saul to convince him that he would challenge Goliath. Goliath is a Philistine that he's talking about. Saul said, no, you're weak. You're just a shepherd. And what David said, he said, no, a lion once tried to kill me. And a bear also tried to kill me. But I fought them off. In other words, that his training as a shepherd, or as, a, you know, tending to the sheep, also came with other challenges, like fighting off predators, which prepared him to fight Goliath. Isn't that amazing? The bear and his lion, and the lion, were his training partners who were trying to literally kill him. But it was through that training and, and, and fight, battling with those wild animals, that he could release the potential within. He could release the hidden potential that God had put in him, and then he would face a giant, one that everybody was afraid of, and he would smote him. He would smite him. It's an amazing day because this is really David and Goliath right here. You see that? Oh, your kids are going to like that animation. <laughs> like that Goliath up there. Towering over David. And David is only armed with a stone and a piece of leather rope, which is a sling. And he defeats Goliath. I love that scripture. Look at this. That scripture said, and it came to pass the Philistine and came. And look at this. David hastened and ran toward the enemy. He ran toward the army. He engaged the enemy. Amen? There are times in our lives where God challenges us to face a Goliath. And we do want to hide like everybody else. All the other people of Israel were hiding. But it takes the courage of a David it takes the courage of understanding who is you are. David was a man after God's heart. To then muster up that strength that comes from your relationship with God. And to face it. To face the Goliath. Actually, look at this. It says, run towards. Run towards and engage the enemy. It is that kind of strength that legends are made of. You know? And this is what the people of God, this is what we have. We don't know it, but we have it. You know, we are, we are having an incredible experience now where we are really, what we're doing is we're with the whole world church. We are on this journey. We are almost on a, in a worldwide workshop is what we're doing every week. <laughs> thousands and thousands and thousands of brothers and sisters joining us from across the world. Basically, in a worldwide workshop where we are refocusing what it is we have to center our life on. In the midst of that, there is a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of, 
you know, provocatoring, provocateurs. The archangel's on the run. So he wants to, you know, send his minions ahead. And in the midst of all these things, we can see something in front of our eyes. We can, the whole world church can see something. Many of them, proctors, want to say this is division, this is division. No. We celebrate because this is separation, separating from Satan. When you want to remove a cancer or a, a disease, you have to separate it from you. You cannot have it with you. Amen? Amen. And the unity that is cloaked in political correctness is just a way to control. It's just a way to make us feel guilty of standing for God. So we must not bow to that. No man is our God. Only Christ do we bow to. Amen? We stand with Him. And this is what is so incredible about this situation. Because you, you have these debates that are really going, going on with just a group of people. <laughs> They're not even, this is not even a worldwide debate, really. It's going on with a few, few people <laughs> who are, you know, provocateurs who want to defend the archangelic hierarchy, who want, to, who want to hide from transparency, who want to hide from meeting our true potential and relationship with Christ. There's so many hidden things there. There's one incredible uh, 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 article that some people have sent me that actually compares. It compares the Chen Sung with the new Chen Sung because many things what we will, that we will hear, oh no, well we did, the, 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 they didn't change it so much. It only been changed just a little. It's been edited for stylistic points. But when you actually look at it, one brother from Europe did an analysis, looking at the actual differences between the Chun Sung Young that Father ordained and canonized, and the one that has been put out as the new and true Chen Sung Gil, which of course I have said is treason and it is heresy. Very simple. Very plain simple. Look at this. Because when you actually compare the two texts, about 80% of the actual content was changed between these books. Many of the provocateurs want to claim it's only 5%, 3%. We added the new stuff from Father after 2006, etc., etc. But the reality, the reality is more than 80% has been redacted, removed, changed. It's a totally different collection. Ten books out of the 16 have been deleted. The titles of book 7, 8 have been changed and, and 11 have been changed. Eight out of the entire 14 books weaved anew. It's a clear degradation, this brother writes. Less than 20% of Chen Sung Young, that true father did, Hundo Ke dozens of times, now exists in the current heretical scripture. In the table of contents, out of 16 books that true father established, 10 of them have been deleted. 8 out of 14 books in Chen Sung are created under true mother's direction are titled anew. Add to this fact that father affirmed again and again, true parents have already prepared the last words I will give to humankind. I am leaving behind eight textbooks and teaching materials for humanity to use for all eternity. That's a quote. They did not even last a couple of months. And imagine if the, the people of God stay silent. Imagine if we stay silent, folks. We stay silent against this type of total, total desecration of the Messiah. It's very interesting because he goes into looking at some of the specific books. And he goes, oh, some people say that's because they took out repetitions and it's less than this or that book. But when you look inside, and he's talking about book three on true love, which is Father's main canonized teachings on true love. And when you go inside, you find that from 164 paragraphs of the first chapter, only six are left. From the 319 paragraphs of chapter 2, only 3 are left. And from the 134 paragraphs of chapters 3 to 5, not a single one remains in the new book. 
Altogether from 617 paragra paragraphs of, your, of the book, of the new one, only nine remain out of 617 canonized verse, verses, only nine remain. You can see this is a massive, massive, massive surgery. What is it? Mastectomy, right? Mm -hmm. A removing of the entire scripture. In other words, the archangel is not only enough that he goes after the hierarchy or he goes after true mother, he goes after whatever, he also goes after the word. Just like in the scripture, in the Bible, we only have uh, maybe a few dozen pages of Jesus' actual words, even though he had three years of ministry. In the same way, what Father's words have been redacted, reduced to nine little phrases. Nine out of 617 removed. I'm sorry, backwards. Out of 617, only nine remain. That means only 1.5% of the original content on true love is the same. Only 1.5%. And Father said this scripture will be the scripture for humanity, for eternity. So, you are then accusing true Father of having failed 98.5%. And only getting 1.5% right. That's how pitiful you are, you archangels. That's exactly who you are. You have totally desecrated Father's life work and his word that he left as the given word to humanity. And you are justifying it. And you know, we really know who you are. And we know why you really do it. Because you secretly hate Father. You secretly harbor resentment towards Him. You secretly delight in this justification, in all your justifications, trying to explain away this incredible desecration and indulge in your resentful feelings against Him. Riding out the wave of desecration so you can have a hidden pleasure and desire inside of you. You see, that's what we know that we can see right through you. Because nobody in their right mind, nobody in their right mind, who actually has a head, who actually has a brain, who actually has capacity to think, would ever say that you can represent an artist with 1.5% of his work. You can't say that about a painting. And we looked at the paintings last, last week. Contemporary paintings. You can't just walk up to that Molisa, Mona Lisa, paint her entire face black or a different color, and have only one eye and say, oh, it's 1.5%. That's the Leonardo. That's the Mona Lisa. You can't do that. You would be angry at desecrating a piece of art, secular art. But yet you have no qualm when they do it to the Lord. You have no qualm. You are nothing but liars and hypocrites. That's exactly what you are. And you have a hidden hatred of your father. And that is why you are allowing and justifying this type of heresy. And we see right through you. Right through you. You can't hide anymore. You cannot hide. Because yes, father was not easy to be with. Yes, the disciples, when they followed Jesus, they betrayed him. He's not, he was, he's the presence of God on earth. You understand that? He's not easy to get along with all the time. Because he's more than a human being. He's got cosmic power in him. It's not like hanging out with your buddies. You understand it? You're in the presence of the creator. So yes, as a human being, we have struggles trying to follow him. The disciples had struggles following Jesus for even three years. They betrayed him on the cross. They left him. They ratted him out. But see, at least the people of God, more and more now worldwide, can admit we had resentment. Okay? We can admit it. And we can ask for repentance. And ask for forgiveness. 
so that Father would come into our heart and forgive us and give us a new heart and make us a new creature. But see, all of you who don't want to do that, you want to be defiant, unrepentant, you want to try to hide the fact that you hate your father and that you secretly resent him, you are, we see right through you. We see right through you. You cannot hide anymore. It is the high noontime settlement era where all your shadows come out. Your hatred of your father is being revealed. Nobody in their right mind, even if it was an unrelated secular artist or a secular painter or a secular sculptor, I don't like this Twinkie dog in this picture here. That is not a work of art to me. But I will not go up to it and cut it in half and say, hey, that's what the artist intended. I, this looks better now. I will not do that because when you have a piece of art, it is a highly individualized, highly specific to that person's self-expression. And so it is a highly, highly, highly special piece that they left. So anybody in the secular world would say, we don't desecrate them. But then you have no problem when God sends his, God sends Messiah to come and to reveal his word, which is the greatest art, which trumps all these human artists, all these human sculptures, which is the word of life that saves people, one word you choose, you're killing, you're murdering somebody, and you cannot even admit it. You cannot even admit how idiotic you are and how foolish you are. You are a shame to humanity and a shame to the body of God, and you're lying to yourself. You are lying to yourself. This brother writes, what are you doing by welcoming the new version of Chun Sung-jung? You're confirming that true parents have erred in more than 80%. They've compiled the final words to humankind, but they've erred in 80%. In the case of the third book of True Love, 98.5% they have erred. They had the grave mistake of having understood only 1.5% of what God wanted to give for thousands of future generations as the core holy scripture concerning true love. If you look at the books, he goes on to remind that you search every one of the 617 quotes in true, about true love, you'll only get nine of them. You see all those provocateurs out there who want to pretend that this, oh, this is better. It's a better combination. Nothing can change. You people are total frauds. Total frauds. I'm calling what you are. That's what you are. You cannot do that to any artist. You would never do that to any secular artist, let alone your own father, let alone your own Messiah, let alone the one who died for you to give you the blessing. You are a shameful group, shameful people. You understand that? And we see right through you. You cannot hide in this time anymore. The more you talk, the weaker you get. The more we look at the truth, the more superior God's grace becomes. Okay. Because guess what? Who's revealing himself in all this? It is God. Because God already knew you would do this to him. He knew you would sell him out for money and power. He knew, but he knew his sons, who he anointed as the true Cain and Abel on September, June 5th, 2012, he knew we would not betray him. We won't sell him out for a couple of shekels of silver for a little bit of assets. We won't sell our father out. We are wed to the bridegroom. You understand that? We have intimacy with the bridegroom. We are one with Christ. We do not stand with those who accuse him and destroy and desecrate him. In the, in the words of Jesus. Pitiful. Shameful. That's what you are. Pitiful and 
shameful. You don't even stand for it. You think your father's dead. You wouldn't even do that to your deceased father. This is why you are so wrong, Archangels. You are so wrong. You think father's dead. You think he's dead. You think our father is dead. Do you not hear about the spirit world? Do you not know about everlasting life? Do you not know his spirit is now more powerful? He is now, he will now pour out his spirit upon his children who believe and who stand for him? Oh, you are so in big trouble. Big trouble. You would never do this. Look at these pieces of art. Some of these I absolutely abhor. I don't like them. I don't think they're art. There's a couple scratches and a little porcelain tile. I don't think that's art. But I can't go up to that pitiful piece of art and write on it even though I think it's pitiful. So how can you pose as the faithful ones who are trying to explain Father's word while he's going to that? You can't. You can't. Talk, talk, talk more. Because the more you talk, the weaker you will become. The more cursed you will become because you are leading people away from the truth. Deceiving them so you can have your little groupies around you and you can feel powerful. That's not where true power comes from, boy. That's not where it comes from. Real power comes, the joy of the Lord is my strength. When we give joy to God, that's when we have strength and power. And that's why we don't fear you. You understand that? This is the code of the warrior, the samurai warrior. Any martial artist who trains in martial art will learn this at some point. Even if you train in modern forms of martial art combat, you will probably come to learn of this code at some point. This is the code of Bushido, or the way of the martial artist or the warrior. When I trained martial art, this was the core. This was the core. If you train jujitsu, you train it. That all comes from Bushido. Okay? This is the core of the warrior code in martial arts. You have integrity. You have respect. You have heroic courage. You have honor. You have compassion. You have honesty and sincerity. And you have duty and you have loyalty. You have loyalty. You understand that? You have loyalty to your master. I want to talk to you Japanese sisters out there. Japanese brothers and sisters. You are from this cult. Your ancestry walked this path throughout hundreds of years of war. This was a code. I know many of you whose actual ancestors were samurai. And as a martial artist, I'm samurai too. And you all know that this was the type of loyalty and honor code that prepared your people and you to meet the Messiah. It was this kind of code of total devotion to protect your Lord. Because when you would meet the real Lord, you would build a kingdom. This is in your blood. This is part of your culture. The Japanese view, the Japanese members who have gone to every part of the world to follow Father's direction. You who are in the mother nation position. So that you be obedient to your true subject, your true Adam. That you never betray him. That if the whole world turns against him, you would stand up. And you would resist that satanic heresy. You know how much Father trusted you. How much he invested in you, called you his children, 
Even though your ancestors persecuted him. Even though your ancestors tortured him in prison. He made you his children. He made you his bride. You and the Japanese members, you know what is going on. You know the archangel has taken over. You know they are controlling mother to leave her position as the object to true father. Then you will stay silent. Is that so right? No, because under the article of Samurai, if you did that, you would have to commit seppuku. That is a dishonor to your Lord. It's a dishonorable thing to do. Even if it was just your master of a, of a martial arts warrior tribe, you would never, your ancestors would never give themselves up like this. They would stand and resist or die. Isn't that how you live the last 40 years of your life? To fight Satan's kingdom? To serve God? Isn't that what you give your life every day fighting to build a kingdom for? Wasn't that your purpose every single day as you woke up? In the spirit of honor, and you have seen, you have seen. This is not a small desecration. This is not a couple words here. This is the holy scripture being desecrated. Where is your honor code? Where is your samurai spirit? You must resist this. You must stand against this. As a Japanese church, who has really been the leader of the world church, who have been the ones Yes, and you sacrificed greatly for the Lord Church. You did. And everybody owes you gratitude and debt. That's true. Oh, why are you going to let that all slip away? All those years of sacrifice. And you will, and at the last hour, when your Lord is being desecrated, you will not rise and stand. And all that sacrifice means nothing. It's wasted. Because at the last minute, if you stand in dishonor, you know the samurai code. You cannot do that. I'm the only one who's going to tell you this. You know the loyalty and dedication and your duty to Father. You know it. In the position, you were in the position of the highest ease. Remember what he said to you, Japanese sister? He told you, you are the representative of true mother. You are her represent. You are her teishinja. You are a bride to the bridegroom. It is your duty to be loyal to him. Your true Adam. It is your duty to protect him. Why do you think God prepared you with your samurai ancestry? It is your calling to stand up for him when everybody else will not stand. You always did it. When nobody was standing, you stood to go to Africa. When nobody was standing, you stood to go to Russia. When nobody stood, you stood to go to Siberia. You did it. But when your father and your bridegroom, when your Adam, 
the one who loves you the most more than any man or any person can ever do is desecrated, is ravaged. You won't say. That is not honor, my friends. That is not honor. I hope my words are piercing into your heart like a sharp two-edged sword, like a katana cutting in. Because you know that what you are doing now is not right. You cannot be silent at this time. And what will we see? Will you continue to desecrate your own bridegroom? Will you continue to keep going along with it so you can get along? Where is your honor spirit? Where is your warrior spirit? We'll stand for the kingdom and resist Satan and separate him from the kingdom. Where is it? Why don't you start singing the national anthem, the real national anthem? You know what it is. Bless you, Lord. You must sing it. It is part of your being. It is part of your honor. It is part of the code that your ancestors died for. It is the anthem of the Spirit of God and the Spirit of the Kingdom that in suffering and tribulation we will praise God's grace. That is the Spirit of the Blessing and Glory written in prison when Father was being tortured. Your bridegroom is more, more of a man than any man who ever walked this earth. He is greater than any man. And he bled and he died for you so that you could have eternal life. You must sing this song. You must recite the family pledge with a complete testament. You must read his chins and young. That is part of our honor code. That is part of being a warrior. You cannot continue to support a kingdom that is desecrating the Messiah and pretend you are being faithful. You cannot play those games. Every cent that you donate to that hierarchy is going to heresy. Do you understand that? It's going to desecrate your father's words. Your bridegroom's words. And you know that as the crown successor, I have the authority to order you to stop. To stop funding that type of evil. And I order you not to fund that heresy. You are ordered now. You really want to save the true mother? You really want to save the queen? faster this external, counterfeit, illegitimate hierarchy disappears from the face of the earth, the faster our queen comes home to her rightful position as the loving object partner to her king. Equal in love and value, but obedient and surrender to him as she did her whole life. And which she must continue. And all of us, too, as well. You know that in the kingdom there is a king. 
You cannot play these games any longer for your self-idolatry, want to worship yourself. No, in the kingdom, you cannot worship yourself. You have to worship the king. You exist for the king. We exist as God's object partner to bring him joy. That is our purpose in life. It is not to bring archangels joy when they're desecrating the king. That is not the purpose of our lives. And yes, it's hard. And yes, it's scary. And yes, you have to face the life. But you have to do it. Because you are a warrior. And because you are samurai. That is what you do. And that is what we will do. I want you summarize to start rising. You better start rising. No more waiting around, looking to the left and looking to the right. You better start defending your king. And don't accept the abuse of those Korean leaders upon you. They abuse you, throw them out. You do not deserve that abuse. Father set us free. Not to be slaves, but to be the children of the King of Kings. <laughs> Those three leaders have no authority over you. None. And if they abuse you, you throw them out. You start your ministry. Everybody call you a divider. You say thank you. You say, I am separating from Satan and I will uphold the traditions and the love of my king and the words of my king. And even though the whole world scorns me, I am grateful for his grace that he would use me as an instrument in this final hour so that he could be lifted up all the more gloriously. fight Satan's kingdom and be a coward? You know I'm telling you this because Father loved you so much. You were the center. You were his true love. Because what you did, you surrendered yourself to the will of God. And you sacrificed for the world church before you. you. You did that. You didn't just talk about it. You did it. But this is not the time now to just go along with evil. This is the time to remember who you gave your life to. This is the time to remember your honor code. The code that prepared you to meet the Lord. So that when he came, you would be the one who would build a kingdom. You have to reclaim that position back from Satan. The archangel does not stand in that position. It is you, the child of God. You are the bride. You know, this year, we had such a beautiful God's day. And everybody, everybody here just volunteering and doing incredible things so that we can celebrate God Day. On the day that Father celebrates, on the calendar that He established, and we can celebrate God's Day and lift up God. And we can do it in the traditional way. And yes, some of the things were not perfect. But it was incredible when we actually went through the liturgy, the way Father did. There was such a, a solemn power of actually participating in the ceremony and the liturgy that Father established. It has been erased from us. 
pray to know a different God. Because so we're not even celebrating the one the way Father showed us. What are we doing? But when we could celebrate Father, and yes, it doesn't matter if we're a small group because all of heaven and all of spirit world was with us. Because in this final hour, where Father is being desecrated, guess what? There is a remnant. And there are knights and there are warriors who stand, who are standing, who are starting to get rid of their fear and not be controlled by fear, but stand in the strength of God. For He is our shelter and our fortress. And all you brothers and sisters who are sending me personal emails, Telling me that you are now starting underground. God bless you. We pray for your ministries. Because you are standing for Father. And I know it's hard when you're being persecuted. And you're standing with what He gave us. And you are correct. The victory is already won. You will see. Satan cannot keep his deception up for long. We encourage you, all of us here. We're praying for you and your ministries in those different countries that you wrote us to from. And you are you are standing up at this very important time to defend Father when everybody has thrown in the trash. Pretending that they're faithful. Give me a break. You cannot desecrate 98.5% of somebody's work, call it his work, and then say you're faithful. Give me a break. And this is why our model for this year, for Chenibu, is that the dispensation, may the dispensation of true Father Spirit, true Father Spirit, is that heretical to say nowadays? True Father Spirit may it pour upon this earth, cover the earth. What, you can't say true Father Spirit? Guess what? Because you will never be satisfied. You will never have your purpose without true father. You never have it. Because he's your true Adam. You understand? He is the true Adam. Hallelujah. We will never be full without him. You understand? The church is the bride to the bridegroom. We will never be full without him. But you have to be clear. If you have resentments to him, you have to repent. You have to admit it. And you have to come before him in repentance, turning from that, asking him, asking him to be your all again. You know why you can't experience true Father's Spirit? You know why you're so empty inside? Because you're not surrendering to God. If you don't surrender, He cannot come in. If you have those resentments, He cannot come in. It's like that beautiful song says, less of me and more of you. We are the problem brothers and sisters around the world. <clears throat> Do you not understand that true father now is in a supernatural dimension? Do you, not, Do you not understand this? Are you only looking at the earthly world and its cares? Don't you want to see his supernatural power in your life? Don't you want to be filled with his supernatural spirit? Don't you want to see all the battles in front of you be victorious by His power? He is in a different dimension. We are not in there unless we relate with Him. Unless we are intimate with Him. Unless He is our bridegroom to whom we yearn for, thirst for. He is our sustenance by which we live. He is the better life. 
He is the living water from which you will never thirst again. But you have to surrender. You have to let it go. You have to stop trying to control your life and let Him take control. You have to let Him come in and change you from the inside out, not outside in. You need to let Him come and give you a new heart. So you become a new creation for the glory of His joy. Isn't that when we fulfill our true objective purpose as object partners to God? When we can be used, when we can be, when we can give and take with Him as object partners who fulfill His joy? A mundane, everyday life existence that you are living now is not, not, not your potential. That is not what your life is about. You can tap in to a supernatural place where your father resides, where he is the king. You can see supernatural things unlocking your life. But you have to surrender to Him. Some of you are watching, thousands of you are watching. I know some of you are, have physical sicknesses. I know some of you have massive problems in your relationships. Are you making God the center of your life? Are you making Father, the one we call Christ, are you making Him the center of your life? Are you worried more about your cancer than you are about Father, not being your life? Are you worried more about the battles and the struggles you have now in front of you more than not having Father in your life? If not, I would suggest you have a priority mixed, mixed up. You can see the supernatural power of God come into your life, but you have to let Him in. You have to surrender to Him. You have to repent of your sin. You have to come before Him as a white lamb washed by His blood. That He suffered for you. That you would be free and have everlasting life. Why don't you take this time when we're having the worldwide workshop, and that's what it is, why don't you take this time to do that? To pray that. I want to pray with you right now before I let my mommy speak. I want to pray with you before I do that. If you know, and if you feel convicted, not condemned by the Holy Spirit, but if you feel convicted, and that's a good thing, by the Holy Spirit, I want you to pray with this prayer. Say it out loud as you watch this workshop. Okay, we can say, say it together. Say, true Father. You are my everything. You are my everything. You are Christ. You are Christ. You are Messiah. You are Messiah. You are my true Adam. You are my true Adam. You bled and died for me. I could have life with you. So that I could have life with you. You suffered and were bruised for my infirmities. So that I could be full in you. If I have any resentment, I'm holding on to anything that's blocking you. I declare it with my mouth. And I repent. I apologize. Please come in to my heart. You be the center. You be the Alpha and Omega. You be everything. Pray these with you, 
who stood out in faith and in prayer together with us. We pray this in our names of Central Coast Family and in true fathers and true parents that we pray. Let's give them a big round of applause. Beautiful color hair finish. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> you know, uh, most of us, it's very hard for us to imagine that um, true father being in like early 20s. Because uh, we, we call him father, so automatically we feel, oh yeah, he's of course older than us, right? So, uh, but obviously, you know, <laughs> father. He had a early 20s, right? And it was uh, when he was 24 years old, uh, it was uh, 1944, and he just graduated uh, Waseda University from Japan, and he came back to Korea. And then um, he, he got a job as an electrician. We have a couple of electricians in, in our, in our um, congregation, too, in um, Kashima Kumi. It took me time to memorize this thing. <laughs> Kashima Kumi Electric, the lady, the company. Uh, it's a uh, it's a sole branch in Kashima Kumi Electric Company. That father was uh, had a job and he went there every day to <laughs> to get his salary and he worked very hard. And um, during that time, he actually one of his friends visited his house, and then um, unfortunately, that friend was actually. Um, framed as a, um, a person who goes against the Japanese government and goes uh, doing some kind of communist activity. So, um, and then that friend was dragged into prison. And from that friend's mouth, father's name was mentioned. So father was also dragged into prison too at um, Gyeonggi uh, police station. That's how father got his uh, um, uh, first imprisonment. And when father was uh, in there, father, um, he did not want to mention any of his friend's name. So he pleaded fifth. So he didn't say anything. And then that even um, made, made him go through even more difficult to torture. And a couple of torture, you know, that we know is uh, he was uh, hung upside down. He, his hand was tied in the back. And from the wrist, he was hung in the air for hours. And then they have this uh, father, they make him starve and then force feed the water constantly, constantly. And they have this uh, uh, metal spikes, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the bottom of the shoes is a metal spikes. And it, they kick them around with that metal uh, uh, shoes. And father was constantly bleeding and his skin was uh, um, cut and uh, torn. And father also, his uh, five hand fingers and four fingers are all, uh, uh, ten fingers are all, um, you know, connected to uh, electric cube. And, and father, you know, record this and it was, uh, uh, the, the torture session usually lasts like 15 minutes. And it, it's a most uh, unbearable the painful time he could uh, uh, never forget in his memory. He, he, he recalled it, remember that memory. And then after father came out of that prison, several months later, a couple months later, and father, you know, the, his internal body was so damaged, about for a month he was vomiting blood. And you know, we know, we all, most of us know that the famous story that, you know, even in that prison, he actually prayed for that prisoner, right? And how, and he prayed that how I'm gonna forgive this prisoner, a, a prison keeper, how how can I forgive this person who tortured me? And he he prayed so hard to find the point to to actually forgive this person who tortured him. And when Korea was, after father was free from this particular prison, six months later, Korea was independent. And Korea was six months later, and it was an amazing time for Korean people, but it was, at the same time, it was a hell for Japanese people 
who was actually in Korea at that time, because it's time for Korean people to revenge to, to Japanese people who tortured them. So there was a riot, there was a murder, there was a raping, and it was a, it was just a, it was a hellish time. And that that time was just so crazy. And and we we know father, that father secretly took out the prisoner's family, the the, the prison keeper's family who tortured him. He secretly took them out, and then he sent them out safely to Japan. And then he prayed at that point, he said, uh, you know what, I'm sending this, this Japanese family as a representative of whole Japan. And you know what, on this foundation and on this condition that all these Japanese brothers and sisters will come one day under Messiah. That was a prayer that Father did in 1945. That Father did. And then exactly after 14 years later, under Nishigawa Sensei, the Japanese, uh, little Japanese congregation was gathered in small church. The church was not even um, legally registered. It was five years after the church was legal, legalized, but still there was a small group gathered in this small room. And fathers, that prayer that he did on 1945 was finally a yeah, little of the harvest in Japan, six, 14 years later. And now we have Japanese church. And many of you have that relationship, good relationship with our Japanese members. And as my husband beautifully mentioned, that we are all to many things to our Japanese members. You know, we all call Japanese uh, uh, nation as a mother nation. In 1980, uh, nine, 19, uh, 1998, actually Japan became mother nation from, from Eve nation to mother nation. And I remember, you know, there was a, such a celebration there and Japanese were so happy. And I remember I was being very happy in that celebration too. But many times, you know what? We actually take for granted our Japanese members' sacrifice. And you know, I'm a mother of a five, and you know, mm, th those children are all different. They're all different. And I often tell them, you know what? When you go to college, you have to pay me rent. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't like that, but I do that because not because I hate them, but because I love them. I want to give them tough love. Because I want them to be, of course they have to know everything comes from God, but they, at the same time, they have to know that how to stand to, on their two feet. And then they, can, then they can be proud of what they harvest. If a mommy become a kangaroo mommy, and then they have a big pouch, she has a pouch. But when the baby is over 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old, you are still holding on to that baby. And oh my gosh, if, you, if I let you go, then something's gonna happen. And in the end, the mother dies, and the child, children also dies. But when I see Japan now, it's like uh, she's not only holding one child, one overgrown children, child, but she's uh, holding in her pouch several overgrown children. And there, the, those children actually fighting each other to take up some space in her pouch. And in the end, this is not good for the whole family. See? We love Japanese sister. You know, they, they did everything that mommy can do. In Japanese, Japanese saying, there's a, you love your child so much. Many, you even, you, you, you put your child in your eyes and it's not gonna hurt. I don't know if that's possible, right? A little bit of eyelash in our eyes hurts me so much. I don't know if that's possible. But we, Japanese sister loves their children so much, that much. But you know what? 
What father prayed in 1945 was a becoming one with Christ. That's a mother nation's mission. That is what he prayed for. See, brothers and sisters, especially today, we want to talk with the Japanese brothers and sisters. The, the great deed that you did for Messiah only can come when you become one with Christ, one with the Lord, and that sacrifice, that great deed, finally gets the completion. We glorify, we praise our Lord. Thank you, Gracie. To celebrate, you're free. You're no slaves or angels. You're children of God. You have eternal value. Don't let people abuse you. Stand up for your king. We know you are a samurai. Let's finish with Chen Zhi Young 246. Let's read together. We human beings are 100% foolish, but God, who is more than 100% wise, is our friend. And our ancestors in the infinite spirit world are our companions and supporting army. I am grateful to think about this. I know very well the feeling of taking risks on the front line, like the time David stood in front of Goliath. It is the feeling of courage and confidence. If I fight a hundred wars, I can win a hundred wars because God is protecting me. Let's give God some praise, everybody. God is good. God is good. All right, everybody, I'd like to ask everybody to rise up. If you want to come and pray for our Japanese brothers, please come down here. We want to pray for them today because we know they're going through so much and they're being torn in so many ways. But we'd like to ask all of you to come back. You want to pray for them. You know, these are our brothers and sisters who have really uh, stood in the place of sacrifice for the whole world church. And it's time, it's their time to be free. Amen, guys? It's time for them to be free. They cannot be continued to be abused. And they must stand up. And they must have the courage to face the lion and to chase out their oppressors because God loves them so much and he trusts them and he gave his life for them. So I want to pray for them. If I could ask everybody to hold their hands, your neighbor's hands. We want to pray for you, brothers and sisters in Japan. We want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. Father, we are praying for all our Japanese brothers and sisters who are around the world. They were your first pioneers in Siberia, in Moscow, in Africa. They chose to stand on the front line, to go to those nations, to be blessed to this people, and to start your family and then you share. Father, for 40 years, they took the central position of Providence to support the entire world church. But Father, freed all of us from the shackles of sin. He brought us away from Satan's grasp and clutch so that we could call ourselves your children, not adopted children, but your blood. Father, we are so grateful for all that you have given. And Father, our Japanese brothers and sisters, who I know because of their culture, are being torn up inside and they cannot express it. They cannot say anything. But Father, we pray that as we declare these prayers with our mouth, as we say these words in faith and in trust and in love, that you will begin your supernatural power, a supernatural unveiling of your presence in the hearts of the members around the world. That in the small houses, Again, a passion will be rekindled. That in the basements of people who are gathering to sing your holy song for fear of being oppressed and fear of being persecuted, and who are gathering around a holy candle and reading your chants, and oh, Father, we pray for them right now. We pray that your supernatural touch would bless their ministries. That all those 
would be catalysts for more and more to come and be saved by you again. Father, that we, can, we will understand that you are our salvation. You are our deliverance. And Father, that we would return to our proper position as object partners of you. We are not your subject. Father, we want to lift you up as a subject. We want to lift you up and surrender to your love because you love us so much more than anybody ever could. You are one with our Creator. Father, we thank you. We pray that you would give courage. You, we pray that you would stimulate the Japanese brothers and sisters, ancestry who are samurai, who have been saved by their lineage and who are now can be mobilized in the spirit world to work with in returning resurrection with their physical descendants who are here on this earth who we call our Japanese brothers and sisters, that they would remember that ancestral code and that code of conduct and honor to the Lord that you, that you would come and one day would they would serve. Father, what a great day because we serve a Lord who made us into sons. We serve the Lord who took us as his bride, as his most intimate partner, as his most loving companion, each and every one of us now have a direct relationship with the King of Kings. Father, let us cultivate that at this hour. Let us not focus on the provocateurs and the archangels. And their commands and authority has no more power over us, no more power over any one of the brothers and sisters around the world. And we are free. We are free. Free. Free at last. Free to be in your great love. Father, we thank you so much. We pray that you would touch all the brothers and sisters who are participating in this worldwide workshop. We pray that you would stimulate our hearts to come back to our true love. We thank you and give all the praise, honor, and glory to you. In all the names we report in your precious name, we pray. Let's give God some praise, everybody. Come to your neighbor. God bless you, man. God bless you. It's an honor to walk with you all. Knights of Chaniago. It is an honor.